Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to kick off this strangest of BDS autumn meetings with a tour around what I think are some of the best places to see dragonflies in Europe. I hope you're all wide awake for this early start because it's going to be something of a whistle stop tour. This map's showing the area of Europe that we've defined in the book published earlier this year. Um, it's a pragmatic um, decision to exclude areas to the east, which are poorly known and rarely visited. Um, but it also includes the islands, uh, popular holiday destinations in southern Europe, um, including Cyprus there in the box. Biogeographically, we have great variation from those boreo alpine regions, uh, very cold in the north and Alps and so on, and also right down to the hot, dry Mediterranean lands in the south. So that in turn gives us a good range of dragonflies. Well, a good range it may be, but in global terms, we're rather depauperate in Europe for dragonflies, a mere 138 breeding species out of well over 6,000 species globally. Now, of course, globally, most live in the tropics and there are rather fewer in the cooler temperate regions. Um, that 138 species incidentally includes a new pincer tail, um, news of which seeped out earlier this year um, from southern Spain. And maybe there are more to be found there if people look harder at their anal appendages. Anyway, we have 138 breeding species, roughly a third of them damselflies, two thirds dragons. And that compares with um, 48 species breeding in the UK. So we have roughly one third of Europe's breeding species. Uh, this um, puts the various species into their families. And the one thing I want to uh, pull out there is that uh, the UK only has one gomphid, the common club tail, compared with 16 species of club tails and pincer tails and so on across Europe. So we're pretty depauperate in those in, in the UK. Orange spotted emerald, incidentally, is a taxonomic quandary and we're not sure quite where to put it in the list. So in terms of endemic species, those found only in Europe, uh, there's a concentration of these in southwest France and Iberia. And also in the southwest of Europe and the southeast, we find the highest concentrations of threatened or red listed species. But these together don't really give us an indication of where most species occur. And so here's a species richness map that shows uh, a broad belt of high species diversity across mid latitudes of Europe, with some outposts also in southeast and southwest uh, of the continent. So what I'm going to do for the rest of the talk is focus on these five areas, all of which are easily accessible and have a great range of species, maybe up to 50 species in a short holiday break taken at the right time of year. So let's start with La Brenne and Vienne. La Brenne is an interesting area to the south of the Loire Valley. It has over 4,000 lakes alone in the Brenne and uh, these were dug since the Middle Ages for fish farming. They're drained every few years but nevertheless managed to um, retain a remarkable range of aquatic life, including lots of dragonflies. So here we are just close to the middle of France, I guess. France incidentally has over about around 100 species of dragonflies listed, um, which makes it the best country in Europe, although it is um, a large country, of course. So the Bren is a nice uh, day's drive south from the Channel ports. Uh, which means you can get there quite easily if you don't want to fly. The best time 
to go for dragonflies in much of um, Central Europe, mid latitudes is late June, early July. Um, but here's one that you need to go earlier for. This is the Eurasian basket tail. And it's, in my view, one of the most difficult species to encounter uh, in Europe. So it's well worth thinking about an early visit to find these. Now this is a, a nice well vegetated pond with lots of aquatic pondweed. Excellent for dainty damselfly, dainty bluet, species of course which re-established itself in Britain over the last 15 years or thereabouts. And they like these beds of, in this case, water milfoil uh, just below the surface where they can lay eggs. The periodic dry draining of these lakes to take out the fish and rejuvenate the lakes um, means that they can be quite good for emerald damselflies uh, or spread wings. This is small spread wing, quite a small species as the name suggests, and uh, distinctive yellow behind the eyes. One worth keeping an eye open for in Britain. Another species that survives well here in the Bren is the common winter damsel. And these, as their name suggests, uh, winter as adults away from water. There's some great areas of Fenland, and this particular one was uh, a good location for breeding yellow spotted emerald, a species which found its way to Britain for the first time just a couple of years ago. There are other species here of interest, hawkers like the blue eyed hawker or southern migrant hawker, and um, green eyed hawker, Norfolk hawker, and southern damselfly or um, Mercury bluet. As well as the standing waters in the Bren and Vienne, there are fast flowing and slow flowing rivers. And these fast flowing rivers are good places to look for club tails and other gomphids. And in particular, the rocks in mid river are a good place to scan for small pincer tail, the most widespread of the pincer tails in Europe. They're called pincer tails for a very good reason. The uh, rather clasping nature of the male's appendages give them their name. And the shape, the form of these is used to identify the various species across Europe and elsewhere. Where these watercourses are tree lined and shady, we'd be keeping an eye open for the Western Spectre, um, a small, rather somberly coloured hawker that flies particularly in the afternoons and evenings and even into the night on occasions and will find its way indoors. Where there are slower flowing stretches and in France that's often um, the reason that often caused by the construction of weirs at regular intervals down the rivers, uh, these nice calm sections are great places to look for um, one of the special species in Southwest Europe, um, a European endemic, the orange spotted emerald, which of course we used to have in Britain until the 1960s. Here's a male hung up in the shade and a recently emerged female. So quite tenoral with brown eyes and lovely golden suffusion in the wings. One place not to be missed in this part of the world is a reserve near Poitiers called Pinale. And it's around about a square kilometre, so not very big, but within it are hundreds of lakes dug over many centuries through millstone mining. Um, and basically this is pond heaven. It's fantastic for dragonflies. And two of the species in particular that you want to look out for here are white faces. We have a small white face in Britain or white faced darter. This one here is the yellow spotted white face or large white faced darter. And on the ponds with lily pads, 
keep an eye open for the lily pad white face, which does what it says on the tin. Let's move south now to the Mediterranean coast of France. The Camargue is the delta of the River Rhone, and much of it towards the sea is very saline and brackish, and really only hosts large numbers of things like red veined darter, black tailed skimmer, blue tailed damselfly, so not particularly interesting species. Most of the area of interest for dragonflies lies actually east of the River Rhone within this oval shape. And here lies La Croix. This is a stony semi-desert area, which you would think is not a great place to go looking for dragonflies, but you'd be very wrong because flowing through it are various canals, including the Canal de Vergier, which is reckoned to be possibly the best place for dragonfly diversity in Europe. As you can see, it's not very large. It's quite fast flowing um, and you can get great views and photographs of, of dragonflies along its length. So things like copper demoiselles, along its banks and gomphids such as the large pincer tail and lots of little blue damselflies most of which to be fair are mercury bluets or southern damselflies but this pair are uh, mediterranean bluets a scarce red listed species endemic to southwest europe if you're lucky, you can also find here spotted darter, um, a small ruddy darter like critter with black legs and black wedges along the side of the abdomen. But a pretty localized dragonfly across Europe. To the north of La Croix is this sluggish canal. And here in the spring and summer, there are large numbers of initially orange feather legs and then later in the season uh, white feather legs become dominant. It's also a good place to look for gomphids. You'll notice I'm stressing the gomphids a little bit in this talk. This is the yellow club tail, very handsome with its blue eyes, lots of yellow down the abdomen and if you're very lucky there are a small number of pronged club tail another red listed species, a southwest European endemic. Um, rather difficult to identify, but you need to get good views to be sure. Here in rather atypical habitat, it's typically along sluggish rivers in um, southwestern France and Iberia. Let's move on to southwest Spain, to Andalusia. Um, and we're looking at an area barely 30 kilometers north of Gibraltar. And being so close to the African continent, it will come as no surprise that the rivers and lakes around here have attracted um, quite a number of African immigrant dragonflies. So along uh, rivers such as this, um, you could find orange, orange winged dropwing. The ep <coughs> epaulette skimmer. Um, you can just make out the pale stripe on the side of the thorax that gives it its name. And this is the ringed cascader. Uh, this is a species found uh, throughout Africa or much of Africa. And here it's crept into southwestern Europe. Uh, frequenting torrents, as the cascader name suggests, it likes fast flowing waters and um, waterfalls. This tributary of that particular river uh, Dave Chelmick recommended to me as a good place to see a splendid cruiser early in the season. Now that's a difficult species, one that I hadn't really got to grips with properly in, in France. Um, so we came here and bingo had really good views of them. 
but sadly never at rest, so I never managed to get a picture of one. Instead, here's a plate from the book um, with some of Fons Peel's fantastic images of this rather spectacular dragonfly. Another uh, European endemic found in southwest Europe. More widely across um, southern Iberia, you can find other African dragonflies that have made their way into Europe. So things like the um, fantastic violet dropwing, which has to be um, one of the most colourful species, if not the most colourful species in Europe, and one which has spread quite uh, far into southwestern Europe. It's present in southwest France and may get to Britain soon. Down on the ground, the northern banded groundling. Um, this is an immature. The, the adult males have a dark, uh, solid dark black patches in the wings. Another widespread African species that you can find sometimes in large numbers in Iberia. The long skimmer, which indeed lives up to its name. The black percher. Um, males are all black with white appendages. This is a, an old female that's gone quite dark, still retaining the white appendages. And the Iberian blue tail, which does look admittedly for all the world like the common blue tail that we see and is widespread across most of Europe. But Iberian is the default species in this part of Spain. This is the city of Cordoba with the Guadalquivir River flowing in front. That goes down to the sea at the Cota Doniana, not too far away. But here we're looking for um, an uncommon pincer tail, the faded pincer tail, and it's particularly well um, camouflaged against the desiccating vegetation on the riverbanks. OK, let's head to southeast Europe now, and I have um, something of a love affair with Bulgaria after the first visit I made with Andy McGinney in 2003. I've now um, been there 11 times during midsummer and seen a total of about, I think it's 62 species. And in every trip during um, mid-July to, um, sorry, mid-June to mid-July, we've notched up around 50 species. So a great place and a total that's probably hard to beat anywhere else in Europe. So there are lots of little reservoirs and livestock drinking ponds like this scattered across the countryside. And these are good for picking up common species um, like the white-tailed skimmer, the elongated pale black-tailed skimmer with those tiny white appendages in the male. Blue eye, um, a nice blue damselfly related to the red eyes that we know. And the southern darter, um, very plain thorax. And here a male with um, a good load of red mites, which is very typical of this species. Sometimes we find wanderers like the vagrant emperor and uh, occasionally we've, we've found breeding populations of these. And ditto the dark spreadwing, a species that's highly localised across southern Europe, mostly at coastal uh, brackish localities. Um, but here we found them um, inland also, away from the coast, in um, rushy lakes, little reservoirs, and probably breeding there as well. Another very localised species, both in Bulgaria and across southern Europe, is the black pennant. This is um, an immature male yet to go fully black. Alongside sluggish watercourses and some ponds, particularly where they're tree lined, we'll be looking for the willow spread wings, the willow emerald damselflies. This is an eastern willow spread wing. We have the western willow spread wing um, that's colonised southeast Britain. And the two are very similar and really you 
um, want to look at them closely in hand with a hand lens. Both species occur in Bulgaria, so you quite often have to get a good look at them and check the number of teeth on the underside of the female's ovipositor or the shape and um, extent of black on the male's appendages. Thankfully, the delightful little banded data presents no identification problems whatsoever. Um, we do see these periodically um, in, um, alongside little streams in Bulgaria, often artificial um, drainage channels that have been dug that take their fancy. Sometimes they appear in large numbers, but always a, a delight to see. This is a, a large river in the southwest of the country, the Maritza River that flows into Greece. And here we're going to be looking for club tails again and uh, gomphids. So here's a river club tail. And here, green snake tail. Neither of these, I have to confess, are frequently seen. They're localized and like most gomphids, best searched for away from water and um, always a treat to find. There are high mountains in uh, southern Bulgaria. Here the western Rodopi Mountains. So you'd be forgiven for thinking this was a scene from northern Europe. Um, and therefore it might come as no surprise that here occurs the northern damselfly or spearhead bluet, which is the um, here at uh, these lakes near Smolyan, the southernmost location in the world for them. And the lakes also have populations of yellow winged darters, a species that's become quite rare in Britain in recent years. This is a newly emerged female with um, beautiful wing patternings. In the lower eastern Rodopi Mountains, there are um, streams and little rivers that dry up during the summer. And one species that's particularly adapted to these and very localized is the delightful odalisk. The odalisk is a a damselfly that thinks it's a dragonfly, so it spends its time with its wings open, has these very attractive dark tips, and the males unusual in that they become pruinose when they mature. Another species found along the flowing waters is um, basically a, a brilliant emerald look-alike. It does have that little yellow fleck on the side of the thorax which tells us it's a Balkan emerald. And where these watercourses are shady, then um, and it, a creature that I, uh, I dubbed the shady hawker um, when I first saw it, uh, we now know it as the Eastern Spectre. It's a, a little hairy dragonfly sized uh, hawker that frequents these shady streams. And of course, where there are streams, there are going to be golden rings. Um, so Turkish and Balkan can be found along with somber golden ring and sometimes blue eyed golden ring. Um, we tend not to get um, too many species occurring at any one location, but often it's a question of catching a male and looking carefully um, at the shape of the anal appendages to identify them. This delightful little river flowing down from the Greek border uh, was the location back in 1999 where Milen Marinov saw some strange emerald dragonflies, which uh, when he caught them and had a close look at them, um, in particular at their appendages on the male, um, realized that it was a new species for science and we now know that as the Bulgarian emerald, although it is found across the border in Greece and Turkey as well at about 30 known locations. This is a, a female that I found at a, a site, a new site for the species, one of about 30, and this is the westernmost. It's a, a rather ancient and well-worn specimen, as you can see, um, but note the hairy thorax, which tells you it's 
an early season flyer, so rather like the Downy Emerald best seen in May and early June. But here on this uh, view, you can see the extra bit of yellow on the cheeks that identifies it as Bulgarian. And finally, we'll have a look um, in the far southeast uh, at the area around Dalian. That's the Dalian Delta in the background. And a base here for a week can give you a really nice range of dragonflies, some of which have crept in from Asia and others from Africa, as well as the more widespread Mediterranean species. Lake Kuichis sits on the edge of Dalian. Uh, it's a large lake with big reed beds and from it in the spring emerge larger numbers of this spectacular beast. This is the blade tail. Um, this is early season, so still quite pale. Later in the season, they become quite dark and slightly pruinose. The blade tail is our largest gomphid and one often uh, associated with large lakes. Around here you might also find this strange skimmer, the slender skimmer, that's uh, principally an, an Asian species. And near the lake woodland of liquid amber or oriental sweet gum, and here the streams host a population of the Turkish red damsel. So this is very like our small red damsel, a little bit larger with very small differences. Inland, faster flowing streams and rivers host more club tails, but also golden rings, including the spectacular blue eyed golden ring, those lovely blue green eyes and extensive yellow on the abdomen. And if you're lucky, this pincer tail, the dark pincer tail, which is quite orange towards the tip and heavily marked in black on the thorax. Closer to the sea, the sluggish rivers have good populations of what looks like a common club tail, but is in fact a Turkish club tail. It replaces common club tail in southeastern, the extreme southeast of Europe and uh, small numbers also of this waved pincer tail. This is a female and the males have um, wavy appendages to give them their name. And there's also a population of Syrian club tails here too. But I think pride of place goes to some little seasonal watercourses um, inland from Lake Kujis as well as things like odalisks, they have these two skimmers, epaulette skimmer on the right and small skimmer on the left, another Asian species that's crept in. As is this, the indigo dropwing, predominantly Asian species. And in recent years, a few of this African um, immigrant, the uh, red veined dropwing that uh, I photographed here a few years ago for the first time. But the real coup uh, in this part of the world is the magnificent Emperor, Europe's largest dragonfly. Very colourful, really spectacular. And um, in my book, um, worth going to Turkey alone just to see. OK, so I hope that's given you a flavour of what you can find across the channel. There are a lot more species than you might have seen in Britain, of course, and some great locations for dragonflies, birds, butterflies, lots of other wildlife. And of course, if you go, please do take a good book. There are a couple of good ones around. Here's one of them. Um, also, uh, perhaps I could add available as an e-book, which makes it a little bit more portable if you're worried about the luggage you take abroad. Anyway, when uh, times are good and you can get out into Europe, I hope you can go and enjoy Europe's dragonflies. And indeed, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day here. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.